more than a million voters have uh, switched to the Republican Party in the last 24, in the last 12 months. Uh, and that's a big number, including tens of thousands of swing vo- voters and uh, some declaring they can no longer support the Democratic Party policies. According to a report Monday, the move to the GOP is occurring in every part of the country, in Democratic and Republican states and cities since President Biden defeated former President Trump. An analysis of voter registration data by Associated Press found over the past year, about two thirds of 1.7 million voters who changed party affiliation shifted to the Republican Party, and overall, more than one million people become Republicans compared to 630,000 who became Democrats. Why do you think that is? Uh, the, as I think it was James Carville said, it's the economy, stupid. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's gas. You think part- it's that simple? Yes, I, okay. I, re- I really do. You had a boom economy. You had the most robust economy in our history under Trump. You had uh, record job growth, record wage growth. Billions of dollars coming back in the country to be invested here. Uh, you had an optimism in the country. People's businesses at the small business level doing extraordinarily well. Uh, now you have apprehension about gas prices, about food shortages, rampant inflation. I mean, I went to Publix the other day and I bought a steak. <laughs> steak cost me seven and a half bucks. It was four bites. It was the smallest steak I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that, that that has a lot to do with it. I think that there are... There's no question that there are buyer's remorse, substantial number of people who voted for Biden because they didn't like Trump's style. Oh, he's so crude. His tweets are so crude. Yeah, but how's 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 your business? Oh, my business is doing great. So uh, I think that's this is the manifestation of that. You think people are starting to realize that and process it where they're saying, "Okay, listen, I can't publicly say this. But I, I kind of wish the other guy was president right now, you know, minus the stuff that he was doing on Twitter. I'm willing to tolerate him more than I'm willing to tolerate Joe. Or are people saying there's no way in the world I could support somebody like him? Uh, they're both at this point extremely polarizing figures. Uh, but I do think that there is a, there is certain some nostalgia for Trump's economy. That That is for sure. What would you say Biden has done right? Has Biden gotten anything right since he, he became president? Hmm. Can't think of anything. What about the new gun laws that have been passed? What about the um, uh, infrastructure bill? None of that? I think the infrastructure bill, is, first of all, has nothing to do with infrastructure. It has to do with spending. It's one of the reasons why we have the inflation we have today. Uh, I think red flag laws are unconstitutional. It's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. You want to weigh in on this, Rick? A little bit. I, 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 first of all, I totally agree with you. I think the American people vote uh, sometimes for charisma. But at the end of the day, you're going to vote with your wallet. Mm -hmm. Uh, The average American cannot make ends meet anymore. Whether they were Democrat or Republican before, uh, this is something that, you know, our our survival is our family. And and how do you take care of your family if gas is $5 a gallon? So for that that part, I I totally agree with you. On the the gun stuff, um, that is such a political football. uh, And it shouldn't be. Because you got to look at the, the real facts. Every city that has the highest crime rate in the United States also has the strongest anti-gun laws. Mm-hmm. Then you go to places like Wyoming, Montana, even Florida in some, in some areas, and crime is down because people can defend themselves. You know, that, that, that combination, uh, and you, you were talking about... Uh, uh, Biden doing something right. Let me tell you something that I think that it, it is almost borders on the ridiculous. You go from saying that crime is rampant, you're allowing crime to be go rampant, you're not persecuting criminals, you're releasing them. It's, it's, it's a catch and release like in fishing. Um, and how do, how do you how does that make sense to anybody? Defund the police. So you're telling me that you, who do not like guns and are not willing or able to take care of yourself, who are you going to rely on? The police. And you're voting for, to defund your safety net. That's like buying a parachute on eBay. What about you, Pat? Is there anything that you can find uh, compelling with Biden these days? I know you've been pretty vocal. That you're not exactly a Biden guy. But you, you, you do have the ability to reason. You're not like 
set in your uh, views. But so you, I, give, you can, I, you can I'll, give I'll, an unbiased opinion. So let me tell you how, and this this is going to sound like a, a, a this, but it's not. The less I see the president, the more excited I am. <laughs> I don't want to see the president because to me it's like stay away, go do, do show up and lead. Mm -hmm. Don't get up and complain. So. The benefit of him not being comfortable on stage speaking is a good thing because we don't hear him often. So he's not out there talking all the time, uh, which is a good thing because when he does talk, America doesn't look good when he talks. Would you be comfortable if you found out that maybe Susan Rice or Barack Obama are kind of pulling the strings behind the scenes? Would you be comfortable with that? So, so you're asking policies? If you're asking policies, mm -hmm. I don't support his policies. I don't support what policies he's got in place because I don't think his policies are advancing people. By the way, a million votes to f voters to flip? Flip from what? That means Democrats became Republicans? What are we talking about here? I mean, that's not a small number, by the way. Well, and Pat, if you think about that, break down that yeah. number. That's just a broad number. Where are they coming from? They're coming from the Latino community and the black community. They are. And the Joe Biden is losing black support. He is yeah. losing Latino support. The base of the Democratic Party is flipping. They they are going to lose everything this if they is, keep this, this up. This is right. This is the greatest uh, significant realignment for the first time in the country ever. Hispanics say they split down the middle, Republican Democrat. That's never happened before. Uh, and uh, the reality is that under Trump, you had the highest rate of job growth and wage growth among African Americans, the lowest unemployment rates, and you had criminal justice reform, the First Step Act, the Second Chance Act, so things that the Democrats had talked about but never enacted. Look, look the, 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 the people I know the, who are Hispanic or African American, the parents of the people I knew when I was in the military, they were all conservative. All of them were like, hey, son, are you reading the Bible? Are you doing this? Are you staying this? Are you staying that? They were very much conservatives who were expecting you to be a good man and not break the law and not do this stuff. Same with Hispanics. Uh, but some of them have been sold a bag of goods that's not working. You know what I like? You, you know what I do like on what's going on is on the Roe v. Uh, Wade topic, which we'll get into here in a minute, is where people – on the left got upset with Kamala Harris to say, this is why you need to vote for us and this is why elections matter. And they said, wait a minute, you can do anything you want to do right now. You're not. So we voted for you to get things done and nothing's getting done. So no, elections don't matter. You keep telling us to give more money. A Democrat was out there. Uh, this was a video that went viral. I don't know if you saw this or not. She says, I'm out here protesting about Roe v. Wade and this happened under the watch of a Democratic president who I voted for and five minutes before I came out here protesting, I got an email from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris telling me to give 15 bucks. I've been given $15, but you're not doing anything with my money. How much more money should I give you? So when your own party turns against you, you got a big problem here. And a million is a big number. So if you're asking me that question, mm -hmm. that's well, a big number we're talking well, to address about. address that, whatever that person is, yeah. they probably just don't understand how the Supreme Court works because... Trump put in, what, three justices during his tenure? Which is, uh, so no one's ever done it's that not before. Like, it's not like Biden no, or Kamala have any control over the Supreme Court. You're right, but what, what, what? Uh, okay, so go go with that. Go with mm -hmm. that. What did Biden promise to his voters? Are you talking about packing the court? No, no, no. Go, go, what did Biden, so people who voted for Trump, okay, mm -hmm. what did Trump promise to people that he did? What did Trump promise? What it? What was Trump's promise to his voters that he said, "If you elect me, I'm going to do X, Y, Z." What he's going to make America great again. He's going to lock her specific. up. He's going to build the wall. It's good. So, a, lot, so, a lot of three-word phrases. So, so he's going to probably help create. He, he's going to revive the economy. He's going to rebuild our military. He's going to appoint conservatives to the judiciary. Correct. Uh, he's going to he's going to negotiate better trade deals. Everything and, he, and he said, did those things. he did those things. What did Biden say? I'm going to raise taxes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. He hasn't raised he's taxes. He's gonna build back better. He's gonna be. He hasn't he's built back better. The, he's gonna re-enter the Paris uh, Accords. He did that. Okay. So you got one on his party. So I'm just. I'm just thinking of whatever. He's, I get that. But let me. He wanted to increase um, multilateralism. You know, re-engage with NATO. I, obviously, Trump wasn't a big fan of NATO making them pay. Yeah. Clearly, things with NATO seem to be doing a little bit better these days, especially with the war in Ukraine. I mean, at least. The G7 is on the same page, it seems, against Russia. What else? Okay, so what? Wait, you're, you got a party, another person's got a party. Mm -hmm. You vote for your guy. It's percentage, right? Mm -hmm. If your policies, you say 10 things you're going to be doing. 
if 80% of them you do, then the other party elects a guy, and out of 10 things he said he's going to do, he does three of them, that's a free throw percentage, 80% wins. Yeah. Trump did more of what he said he was going to do than Biden did what he said he was going to I do. I agree with you. And if, and if we take mm-hmm. COVID out, your president today is Trump. By the way, you're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. I agree with you. Here's, so. here's the problem, and I've said this a million times, and, and Roger Stone maybe want to weigh in on this. Trump didn't lose the election because of bad policies. No. It was because of his bad personality. And America was over it, straight up. We can, we can kind of tap dance around his personality all we want, but what makes him charismatic to some makes him unappealing to others, not his policies. You could go down the list, boom, 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 boom. And if you, if you ask most Americans about policies, but by the way, most Americans could not elaborate on most policies. Like you said, James Carville, the Rage and Cajun let me, said, let me push you. people let me push you. with the economy. Let me challenge you on that yeah. real quick. Okay, so this is the one. So we're having dinner two nights ago with a, a guy, Hart, you know who he is, Hart and his wife, mm-hmm. and we're having dinner with Gaines. And uh, Andrew and Jennifer, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm bringing up issues to them. I'm like, so, so let me ask you a question: With such and such thing that Clarence Thomas wants to do, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about uh, transgender? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? Well, you know, to each his own, and all this other stuff. And I said, really? Yeah. I said, okay, cool. I said, at what point did you form this opinion of to each his own? I don't know. I said, 20 years ago, would you have said to each his own? Uh, well, yeah. No, I don't know. I said, look, look here's what happens. Do not let the majority of people, the minority of people who are allowed to convince you they're the majority. So here's what happened. The minority of people who are complainers, they're, they're like this. They come and fight you in the street and they go like this. You want to fight? Let me tell you who I got. I got 200 people back there around the building. If you want to fight, I'm going to come and kick your ass and they're going to come and whoop mm-hmm. your ass. And like, oh shit, they got 200 people back there. So what do you do? You're like, dude, I don't want to fight these guys. And then you go home, right? And then you go around the corner. They got nobody. They convinced the world they had 200 people around the corner ready to fight for them. So because they're louder complainers, they have convinced even Fox News to do a special on transgender, calling that family what an honorable thing to do. What a brave family here. People are falling for all of these things to say, well, if everybody else says it's okay, maybe I should say it as well. Where the hell is your backbone? Maybe you disagree. And if you disagree, people may sit there and say, I, I can't believe you said this. I can't, No problem. Go for it. You can come at me. I'm totally okay with that. But this is my position. I'm uncomfortable with it. Good for you with agreeing with the crowd. I'm not agreeing with the crowd. So if we do go back mm-hmm. and we ask the question of many people didn't feel comfortable with Trump, okay? Many people didn't feel comfortable with DeSantis. Is it true many people didn't? Or is it the fact that the people who said many people didn't are the loudest complainers and we believe that there are many people, but there's only a few? That's the question. And I think people are starting to realize that when you see a million people flipping, maybe there were not many people. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here. 